Hello, my name is Tanner Litchfield. I am going to dive into how I lost $180,000 of my own cash on the subject to deal. If you are looking to jump into sub two, I would advise you wait till the very end of this video to understand everything that happened so that you can try and avoid risks such as these. Okay. So here's the property that I own. This is in Salt Lake City in a city called Rose Park or a town called Rose Park. So what I did, I bought this property with $110,000 on a down payment. Wouldn't do that ever again, but that's what I did. It was a 2014 build, 3% interest rate. Everything looked beautiful. So I rented the top of the house and I entirely finished the basement for about $70,000. And so I was all in for 180 grand. I rented the two places out. Everything was going great. The cash flow was coming in. I was ecstatic. And then I got a picture of a letter that my tenants sent me saying that my property was going to auction. So obviously I start freaking out. I have no idea what is going on. And I call the person, the wholesaler that sent me the deal. I'm like, hey, what the freak is going on? And I had no idea about all the risk of sub two at this point. I was very naive. I trusted this guy a ton. And so I was a bit frustrated, obviously. Right here, that's where the note was posted. My tenants obviously scared as well. And so I start digging into it. And so what happens, my tenants mad, I'm mad and I'm yelling at the wholesaler like what's going on here and so they say okay this is no problem we've done this several times the bank is aware of the sale and so that wasn't supposed to happen the bank's not supposed to be aware and now they are so what they did is they said we need to convert this to a contract for deed so that the that you can stay on as um, stay renting it and that you don't lose the property and the bank sells it right so I'm like, okay, like obviously I don't wanna lose my property, so I'll do whatever. So I sign the ownership back officially to the original seller, and now I make payments, I have equitable interest, but I'm not the full owner of the property. I don't own title or the deed. We are still trying to dig through it. The bank is still saying it's going to auction. Um, I, at the beginning, I'm trying to watch how much I talk to the bank because the wholesaler is like, don't talk to the bank or else they'll definitely sell it. So I'm like just talking to the wholesaler saying, what do we need to do? What's going on? So um, I'm still freaking out. They're like, no problem. We got this taken care of. And um, my tenant gets another notice saying, here's the date. It's going to the auction. Here's the date. And I'm freaking out. Obviously, whatever that contract for deed, that signing it back to the original seller didn't work. And so I'm talking to my attorney now at this point, and it's probably my second or third attorney that I'm dealing with, trying to get the full scope of what the freak is going on. And so my attorney advises, yeah, they are aware. Just talk to the attorney and see what you can do. So when I talked to the attorney that was foreclosing on this property, they told me a few things. They said, hey, listen, we don't even care that it's back in the original owner's name. There's a few ways that we can foreclose on this and it's not looking good for you. Number one, this is a low income owner occupant property. So they're the only ones that can live there. And guess what? We can knock on their door once a year to verify if they're living there. And I obviously have tenants in there, and so I'm screwed on that front. Number two, the attorney says that there's $20,000 in arrears that haven't been paid. And so I'm freaking out because at the beginning of this transaction, that was part of the deal. And the title company told me that they paid the arrears and it's all caught up and things will go smooth. And number three, the loan on this property is worse than FHA. It's a low income entity that is servicing this loan called NeighborWorks. And so NeighborWorks is very, very strict with their loans. They track them like a hawk. So no matter what happens, it's gonna look bad for me. So I need to pay off this loan, right? So the attorney lays this all out. I'm not gonna be able to save this one. And 
So now next step is I need to pay this off with hard money and so I can sell it and not lose all of my money. And so that's what I start diving into. And in order to pay it off, I need to get a hold of the original seller to get their signature to even request a payoff. And so I cannot get a hold of this guy for the life of me. And apparently I learned that he suffers from alcoholism. At least that's the rumor from his brother and he's nowhere to be found. And so I can't get the signature. Obviously I tried with everything that I could. And so I can't get the signature. I can't get the payoff. It goes to the auction and it sells for more than what was owed. So now there's excess funds and my attorney says that I could have a right to those excess funds. There's like 40 grand that I could possibly get. And so I'm like, okay, at least I won't lose 180 grand. Maybe I'll recoup 40 grand of it. After about a month of going through this, my attorney realizes that I do not have rights to those excess funds because I transferred ownership back to the original seller to try and save the deal. So now this seller is getting even more money and I am losing the complete $180,000. So obviously this is an absolute crazy scenario. My first creative deal, super naive, trusted the wholesaler. There's a few lessons that I want you to understand when you are dealing with a sub two deal. Number one, never ever ever trust someone who is selling you a deal. I don't care who it is. I don't care the relationship. Do not trust them. Number two, you need to be very weary of what loan products you are taking over if you decide to take over. Obviously, NeighborWorks, this is a low income entity that watches their loans very closely. I was screwed from the minute I put pen to paper. Watch what loan products you are taking over. And number three, what I would say is if you are going after a sub two deal, do not put as much down or much into the property as I did. Because if these risks do come about, then you have a lot more at risk, right? So I would not put $110,000 on a property. I would not put 80 grand into a rehab. Those are things that I would never, ever, ever do again. So sub two is a strategy that you can take advantage of, but listen, learn from my mistakes. In my personal opinion, sub two is not a strategy for new investors. There is a lot of intricacies that you need to be aware of, and I am highlighting the tip of the iceberg. There are so many more um, that even I'm not aware of, so I am very hesitant on sub two. So in my personal business, I focus almost entirely on completely seller finance, where there's no bank involved, it's me and the seller, and we negotiate terms that make sense. So if you are interested in the creative finance space, especially seller finance, I recommend you follow, subscribe, and I know I can teach you a thing or two about that. I just acquired a property, a three unit in South Salt Lake that I'm gonna talk about here shortly. It's a 4.5% interest rate, completely seller financed, so I don't have to worry about these banks and all of the laws that we're trying to stay under, right? So, and another thing that you might want to look into if you're thinking about sub two that I have not even touched on because I'm not an expert in that part is what if the seller goes bankrupt and they're going after their assets and they see that their name is on the loan, but you have ownership, right? Like there's a ton of different things that people don't look into when they're jumping into these sub two deals because it's a buzzword. People get excited about it and yeah, so watch what deals you get into, learn from my mistake. I lost 180 grand on the sub two deal. And now I stick mostly with seller finance. So like and subscribe, I'll see you shortly.